Yo, it's Two Side Anime here, and as promised in the Chapter 9 Boruto review video, I told you guys I was going to do a deep dive into the Uzumaki clan, why they are essential to the Boruto series, and what caused them to be annihilated by three nations under the nose of the Leaf Village. To understand the rise and fall of the Uzumaki clan, you also have to understand the Osuki clan. Omnipotence, the origins of Shibai, the hierarchy and structure of the Osuki clan, the Jogon, Tenori, and finally, Kaguya's backstory. See, I've been seeing a lot of theories floating around all over YouTube and all over Twitter, and I was probably one of the first people that tried to connect the Uzumaki clan with the Osuki clan, ever since we got that tidbit from Sarada and the new Team 7 talking about the Byakugo seal on Sakura's forehead. Just a warning guys, unfortunately, this is going to be a very long video. I wanted to break it down in different parts and release the video separately, but then I I just felt like that would take away from the impact of this theory. So how we're going to do this today? I'm going to do a quick refresher on the Uzumaki clan and explain to you guys why they were so special. From there, I'm going to show you guys every hint that we received that the Uzumaki clan is going to play a major role within Boruto to Blue Forte. That will probably be the quickest section of the whole video. Then we're going to move into the Otsutsuki clan, Shibai's origins, omnipotence, the first god tree, how the clan was structured, the different families within the clan, the divide that started the unrest of the Otsusuki clan, and from there we're going to lead up to Kaguya landing on earth. We're going to dive into her backstory because that ultimately leads up to the creation of the Uzumaki, Senju, and Uchiha clan. Then we're going to tie all that together with the Uzumaki clan and why they got eradicated. And from there we're going to move into the Jogon and the role Toneri played. And finally, we're going to bring it all together and explain how Shibai Otsosuki has been using omnipotence to control all the Naruto part one of the present events within the Boruto series. So we have a lot to talk about. So it's theory time. Know the model. Let me cook. Before you guys hop on here and be like, you stole this from somebody else. First of all, I made the Uzumaki clan theory back in 2019 on Twitter talking about how Jigen played a major role in the destruction of this clan. A few months ago in my Tragic Fate video, I explained how Shibai is the only Otsutsuki that can use omnipotence and he's been controlling everything from the start. So this is just all old information if you really pay attention to what I say on this channel. But anyways, let's start. In chapter 500 of Naruto, Kashina gave us the backstory of the Uzumaki clan. She explained how the land of fire and the land of eddies had a close relationship. The shinobi of the leaf village Senju clan and the Uzumaki clan were distant blood relatives and to represent this camaraderie leaf village adopted the vortex of the Uzumaki clan. This is the very vortex that you see on the jackets of every jonin and all over the village. The Uzumaki clan was known for a couple things. Their red hair, longevity, chakra, pulls, and their sealing jutsu. The Uzumaki clan was known for their longevity because they kind of lived forever. Mito Uzumaki married the first Hokage, and Mito was alive well enough into the Genin years of Kashina and Minato. She still retained most of her red hair color. Let's move on to their large chakra pulls. The clan produced some of the strongest ninjas, early Naruto and Shippuden. Even though Naruto Uzumaki was only half Uzumaki, he still had a larger chakra pool. Ninetales admitted that he was interfering with Naruto's chakra control and restricting the amount of chakra that Naruto could use. But even with this interference, Naruto was still able to learn the multi shadow clone jutsu, which takes a lot of chakra. Let's move on to the goat Nagato. Nagato was from the Uzumaki clan and his family relocated to the land of rain. At a very young age, Obito implanted two Renegons into the eyes of Nagato. We see how much chakra was drained out of Sasuke anytime he used his Renegon abilities. So this little kid was able to maintain two Renegons his whole entire life because of his immense chakra pool. In chapter 510, 
page 113 obito says you were the third sage of six paths you exerted so much power that your red hair proof of your uzumaki clan lineage nagato's hair color changed because he was attached to the ghetto statue or ghetto statue i probably said it wrong anyways it basically sapped a lot of his chakra but he was still connected to it and was able to use it and maintain his other puppets at the same time pretty crazy and finally the uzumaki clan was known and feared for their city jutsus but two of their jutsus are very important to this particular theory the byakugo seal and also the death reaper seal let's start off with the death reaper seal the death reaper seal is important because this shows that the uzumaki clan was fascinated with the concepts of life and death and the death reaper seal takes away a target's soul and seals it within the reaper the uzumaki clan develop a mask that allows them to summon the reaper and retrieve the souls that were captured by the jutsu this means they're able to resurrect that soul that they stole which we saw Orochimaru do. It seems like the Uzumaki clan influenced Tobirama to create the reincarnation jutsu. Tobirama was an innovator for majority of the forbidden jutsu created in the shinobi world. He was a scientist. The Uzumaki clan were full of scientists that specialize in sealing jutsu. Scientists always become obsessed with the concepts of life and death and immortality and this makes sense because kushina said that the uzumaki clan was a bit savage and that's probably because of the methods they took to develop their seals playing with life and death always leads to some type of insanity just look at lord orochi Maru. Let's move on to the second seal, the most important seal, and that is the Byakugo seal. In chapter 35 in Boruto Next Generations, Sarada brought up the Byakugo seal on her mother's forehead and how it's similar to Boruto and Kawaki's karma seal. This conversation led to Boruto saying he wanted to go talk to the fifth Hokage and figure out what she knows about the Byakugo seal. This was placed in this chapter to catch the reader's attention to realize that the Byakugo seal is very similar to the Karma seal. Yes, we know the Karma seal is nothing but Otsutsuki data being decompressed into the person to overwrite their soul, and it holds a thousand years of combat experience from that Otsutsuki. It also increases speed, agility, and etc. With Kadachi, the writer of Boruto Next Generation, pointing out the similarities between the Byakugo seal and the Karma seal, it raises a very good question. When did the Uzumaki clan members come in contact with a Karma user to be inspired to create the Byakugo Jutsu? Just think about it real quick. When you look at the Byakugo seal, how it spreads on the body, how it stores enormous amount of chakra, increases the person's durability, strength, speed, etc. It's kind of similar to the Karma seal. Not a hundred percent because the Uzumaki clan wouldn't understand what karma really is but based off what they saw and experienced they tried to create a replica to the karma seal. So who was the karma user that the Uzumaki clan ran into? It was Ishiki Otsutsuki aka Jigen and the second Otsutsuki that was crossed off on the tablet where Jigen was keeping the juvenile Tintail. We are finally at the point of this theory where we had to pivot off to the Otsutsuki clan. But long story short, even though I'm explaining it in depth, it's basically Jigen's fault that the Uzumaki clan was destroyed and the Uzumaki clan was influenced by that second Otsutsuki to create the Byakugo seal. But it's not going to make sense until I explain everything. This theory is going to sound far fetched. But if you just think about it, the Uzumaki clan has been hinted too much in the Boruto series. We have the chapter with Sakura and Lady Sanade, Byakugo seals being mentioned to be similar to the Karma seal. The title of Boruto, Two Blue Vortex, has two blue vortex. The symbol of the Uzumaki clan is the whirlpool, the vortex. And in Minato's one shot, we learned that the vortex was used to keep Kushina in a certain place of the village. All of this leads back to the Uzumaki clan. 
let's move on to the Otsutsuki clan. The Otsutsuki clan is probably one of the most mysterious aspects of the Naruto slash Boruto franchise ever since their introduction through the Madara plot twist during the war arc. But thanks to the introduction of Shibai Otsutsuki, Onnipotence, the opening dialogue within the Boruto 2 Boo Vortex Volume 1, Old Data Books, and Kenshiki and Yurashiki, we now have enough information to set up how the clan is structured, who was at the top, and how how they operated. And a big shout out to Yurashiki and Kenshiki. They really expanded the lore of the Utsusuki clan. And my boy Kenshiki expanded the world building of the Boruto franchise. And it's actually crazy. So I want to briefly go over that before I start talking about the creation and the expansion of the Utsusuki clan. If you guys remember when Boruto first started, Samurai 8 was being ran by Kishimoto. Kishimoto stated that he wanted to connect the world of Samurai 8 with the world of Boruto. So Kadachi Ikimoto and the studio Periyat started to lay the groundwork to make this possible and they did this by making Kenshiki say this. In episode 15 of Boruto Next Generations, Kenshiki says, I found tears in Kaguya's world. The space curvature exceeds 16. Kenshiki continues and says, anything over a 10 in the space curvature is an abnormality and must be reported immediately to the clan. That's law. We break down what this means. Before Kaguya ate the chakra fruit, lost the Hagoromo, and he spread chakra to every being on the planet, Earth's curvature was probably like around a 9 or 10 but with her chakra being spread everywhere it increased it to a 16. But the Otsutsuki clan has a law stating if anything exceeds a 10 needs to be reported right away to the council. This means in the past they have found planets similar to earth with life forms just like earth. This opens up a huge door of possibilities for the world building for Boruto 2 Blue Vortex. Back to the main topic who created the Otsutsuki clan. Thanks to volume 1 of Boruto 2 Blue Vortex, we finally have the answer and also shout out to Naruto Explain. He also cleared up the mistranslation of this dialogue of information that we received. The translation states, Kamio Otsutsuki used to be a god in a world that no longer exists. It is said that he used the technique to create the current world and its infinite possibilities. It is the ultimate power to materialize any thought or idea into reality. However, this power can only be wielded by Kamio Otsutsuki himself, making the power beyond control for either. Currently Ida's ability is limited to manifesting only her untapped desires into reality without any conscious control of. Translation was explaining Ida's ability and how we got from Boruto Next Generation up to the events to Boruto Tubu Vortex. Cameo is translated into God. The only character that is known to be a god from the Otsutsuki clan is Shibai himself. This passage is about Shibai and how he created the Otsutsuki clan and everything in the Naruto slash Boruto franchise with omnipotence. Shibai's origins is similar to the Targaryen family and the Valerian family from House of Dragons. The Targaryen family came from a place known as Old Valeria. They were known for having an army of dragons, sorcery, and all types of mystical powers that made them unstoppable. The problem was Old Valeria was set up upon 14 volcanoes, active volcanoes. When the events of the doom happened where all the volcanoes erupted at once everybody was wiped out except for the Targaryen family who were able to take a couple of dragons with them to the world of Game of Thrones and started Aegon's conquest. This is the same thing that happened to Shibai's old world. If Shibai was the god of the old world there's probably multiple other gods and their thirst for power probably led to the destruction of that world. This is no different what we saw with the Sith in Star Wars. The Sith Empire had this exact issue where the Sith were so greedy for power that they constantly killed and destroyed each other so the jedi didn't have to do anything they just sat back and watched them constantly destroy each other this continued to happen until dark bang created the rule of two where there should only be a master and apprentice philosophy that all the sith lords use to continue on the legacy of the sith i know this might sound off topic but shibai created the rule of one after witnessing the destruction of the otsutsuki clan pre-ascension shibai used omnipotence to create the world that we're seeing 
seeing now in the Naruto slash Boruto franchise. From there, he established the Otsutsuki clan. Shibai established this clan by creating three families, which is represented on the stone tablet that is located in Ishiki's dimension. In chapter 35, Sasuke was able to reach Ishiki's dimension by using the coordinates left by Amado. In this dimension, we see three stone tablets representing the Otsutsuki clan members that invaded Earth. One for Kenshiki and Momoshiki, the second for Ishiki and Kalgia. The third pair was crossed out. They were destroyed, but that was done on purpose by Ishiki and there's a reason for that. But before I dive into why they're crossed out, let's stay on topic and focus on the families first. Then I'll dive into that at the end. Each of these Otsutsuki clan family members are represented by different colors. Momoshiki's family is represented by blue. Ishiki's family is represented by red. And this isn't a reach. You can see it within their DNA. If the karma seal is nothing but decompressed data of the Otsutsuki DNA, it makes sense to why Ishiki's karma seal is red and Momoshiki's karma seal is blue when activated. If you still don't believe me, let's revisit Boruto episode 54 when Sasuke invaded Kalgia's castle. In this episode, we see a statue which is covered in the color blue. This statue represents the OG council member and the head of Momoshiki's family. In episode 55, we see a red statue and this statue is the OG council member head of Ishiki's family. And the other family, like I said earlier, is unknown because their markings were crossed off in Ishiki's dimension. To understand the hierarchy of the Otsutsuki clan, you have Shibai at the top, the god who created everything. The council, the original members that he created. The council makes all the laws and rules for the clan and they monitor and manage the harvest. Chakra fruits that are obtained from places or planets that space curvature exceeds 10. Those chakra fruits are given as tribute to Shiba. Underneath the council members, we have the Utsusuki pairings, the main branch family and their underlings. Momoshiki, Ishiki, and unknown Otsusuki number one are the main branch families, and underneath them in the pairings are their underlings, Kenshiki, Kaugia, and unknown Utsusuki number two. Underneath the underlings, there are the scout Otsusuki members, which is basically Yurashiki, and they're sent off to find the planets rife for the harvest. Now that we understand the structure of the Otsusuki clan, we can now dive into what caused the downfall of this clan. Any chakra fruit that came from an area that exceeded level 10, which is clan law that has to be reported to the council, was fed to Shibai. Shibai ate these fruits until he ascended to the 4D plane. Shibai's body was kept as some type of religious item for the Otsutsuki clan because they thought one day Shibai will return to his body and give them more knowledge. Shibai never returned and the lust for power took over the Otsutsuki clan. The power of omnipotence doesn't affect the Otsusuki, so he couldn't control and move pieces to stop his clan from getting to that point. The Otsusuki pairing that was crossed off in Ishiki's dimension stole the body of Shibai and an older Tentails seedling. Pairing escaped to Earth, and that explains why the divine tree that we saw in Kalkia's backstory was on planet Earth 2,000 years before Kalkia arrived. And no, I'm not saying that Utsusuki pairing fed Shibai's body to the Tentails to create that divine tree. They kept the body to explore it to learn the secrets of Shibai and his ascension to godhood. That's the Otsusuki creed to become gods. But since Shibai was around, nobody else was allowed to ascend to that level because of the structure of the clan. So of course they're just going to study his body. Planet Earth was the safest place for this pairing to escape to because Momoshiki stated in episode 15 of Boruto New Generations that they were supposed to harvest planet Earth last. This confused Momoshiki because Kalgia was very timid, which lines up with the anime canon of her backstory. And he was confused why there was a divine tree ever planted. And before you guys jump me and say that Amado confirmed that Ishiki and Kalgia were supposed to harvest Earth, we have to remember we're not sure if there was a specific time period. Ishiki and Calgia were supposed to start cultivating Earth. Takes us 
to Kaguya and Ishiki making their way down to Earth and how it lines up with the anime canon that was established in Naruto Shippuden and also tidbits of Kaguya's backstory in the manga Naruto Gaiden and the last movie. On their journey to planet Earth, Ishiki used Kaguya to cultivate chakra fruit from planets that were en route to Earth. This explains why Kaguya was in her base form when she arrived on Earth. When the Otsutsuki brought back to life by the karma sale process, they are reverted back to their base form. We learned this in chapter 46 of Boruto New Generations when Amado was explaining the karma reincarnation process. We see in the panel base Momoshiki's head on Boruto's body. To further add on to this point, anytime we have seen Boruto interact with Momoshiki, he is always in his base form. Momoshiki died in his fused form, so if this theory wasn't true, we would have seen fused Momoshiki anytime Boruto talked to him. But no, we see base Momoshiki. The underling of the pair is the Otsutsuki that feeds themselves to the ten tails to create the tree. They're not supposed to get stronger than the person above them. Back to the story. Ishiki runs into the first unknown Utsutsuki. The Utsutsuki on top of the crossed out pair in Ishiki's dimension. Ishiki begins to fight this Otsutsuki who betrayed the clan by stealing Shibai's body. Kaguya continues towards Earth because there's essentially nothing she can do. She's back in her base form. Ishiki kills this Otsutsuki and discovers Shibai's body. Ishiki being a loyal main branch family member was faced with a dilemma to report back to the council with the body of Shibai or continue his mission to cultivate the fruit on earth. Also, the roots of becoming a god started to spread within Ishiki's mind because of the betrayal of the other two Otsutsuki. You can see with how Ishiki interacted with Kashin Koji that he has a hard time with understanding betrayal, but he still wanted to become a god, so he stored Shibai in one of his dimensions mentions and continue his path down to earth. Kaguya was essentially separated from Ishiki, which leads us down to her arrival to planet earth. This is where the events of episode 460 in Naruto Shippuden begin. Kaguya falls in love with the human and she gets pregnant by him. The other crossed off Otsutsuki, the underling, was used to create a divine tree on planet earth as a safety measure just in case the Otsutsuki clan came to planet earth ended up finding the two clan members. The underling stayed on earth and remained in hiding. The other one sensed Ishiki and Kaguya's approach. He left the other Utsutsuki to try to stop them and lost his life to Ishiki and also lost Shibai's body. This Otsutsuki is going to remain in hiding during all the events of Kaguya's arrival on earth and the creation of the shinobi world. But we will get back to this Otsutsuki because he's vital to the Uzumaki's clan's destruction. Back to episode 460. I'm sorry I'm jumping all over the place but it's a lot of moving parts that we got to bring together. Kaguya gets pregnant. She finally eats the fruit that was already on planet Earth and she ascends to her next form. Shiki lands on Earth after Kaguya gives birth to her new sons. Kaguya explains to Ishiki how a divine tree was already on the planet. Ishiki understanding that this was the works of the two Utsutsuki clan members that betrayed the clan, he was distracted because he realized the ten tails that was used to create this divine tree was a different specimen than the juvenile ten tails that the Otsutsuki usually use to create the god trees. While being distracted, Kaguya cuts Ishiki in half. And based on chapter 46 of Boruto Next Generations, we know how this ends. Ishiki ends up in the ear of Jigen and takes over his body and wanders the earth trying to restore himself and cultivate the god tree fruit. Kaguya's story continues as it was told in Naruto Shippuden. Her two sons grow up, they seal her, Black Zetsu was born, her third son, and Hagoromo spread chakra throughout the shinobi world. All these events were taking place on Earth. Shibai being in the 4D dimension foresaw Momoshiki arriving to Earth, the resurrection of Kaguya, and eventually the rest of the clan coming to planet Earth. So he started to use omnipotence as a means to move pieces around throughout Naruto Part 1 and Naruto Shippuden all the way up to the Boruto series. The reason why Shibai didn't want any other Otsutsuki to become gods is because if multiple Utsutsuki learn the ability of omnipotence, they will start trying to write their own realities, which will contradict the reality in the world that Shibai already manifested. Ida kinda alluded to this in chapter 1 of Boruto 
Tupu Vortex on page 14. She said, to be brutally frank, I give up trying to return things the way they were. It would be more practical to just rewrite different memories, though there's a risk in that too. We can argue that Shibai had definitely has better control of omnipotence than Ida probably was and a better understanding. But imagine if another god came into the 4D plane trying to create another reality within the reality that Shibai already established. The world will come to an end just like the place he originally came from. Shibai understanding this, he had to create a plan to kill off every Otsutsuki that came to planet Earth. Since omnipotence doesn't affect physical texts, there was nothing Shibai could have done to stop Black Zetsu from altering the stone tablet of the Uchiha clan. And you also got to remember, Zetsu was half Otsutsuki, so omnipotence wouldn't even work on him, Hagoromo, or Homura. And he also has to deal with the other Otsutsuki that is in hiding on planet Earth. This leads us finally to the destruction of the Uzumaki clan. I know it took us a long time to get here, but let me cook. The underling Otsutsuki that was used to create the divine tree came out of hiding and became friends with the Uzumaki clan and started to teach him the ways of the Otsutsuki clan. This knowledge fascinated the Uzumaki clan, so they created the Byakugo seal to resemble the Karma seal that the Otsutsuki showed the clan. The Karma seal is the closest thing to immortality, and we can see that the Uzumaki had a fascination with life and death because they created the Death Reaper seal and mask that can conjure up the Death Reaper and retrieve the souls that were stolen by the Jutsu. Shibai had to act fast and use omnipotence to erase their mind, but before he did it, there was an event that took place that caused every nation to want to destroy the Uzumaki clan. The event was Jigen fighting against underling Otsutsuki clan members. Ishiki finally gaining full control over Jigen's body discovered that there was another Otsutsuki clan member Member on earth that he could have used to cultivate the tree and finally go through with his plan. But his plan was foiled because during his battle, he went to Karma V2, was in the process of killing the other Otsutsuki, and the other Otsutsuki ended up destroying themselves to make sure Ishiki will never attain his goal in becoming a new god. This Otsutsuki believed in Hagoromo's goal of achieving world peace. But this battle gained the attention of the surrounding nations and they saw everything. And the only thing that they could make out of this battle was that Jigen had a Byakugo seal on his chin. Even though us as the readers know it was the Karma seal, to the shinobi of the past, they just thought it was a Byakugo seal. And they linked that Byakugo seal to the Uzumaki clan and that scared them. They believed that the Uzumaki clan became such a bad threat. This is what caused the surrounding nations to descend upon the land of Edi and destroy the Uzumaki clan. Shibai took this opportunity to use omnipotence to make the Uzumaki clan forget ever meeting this Otsutsuki. And that he also also use omnipotence to pacify the leaf village. If you look at the map, the leaf village was right next to the land of Eddies. So there was no way that these nations that slaughtered the clan were able to make it to the Uzumaki clan village and destroy the clan without the leaf knowing. With the destruction of the Uzumaki clan, Shibai had to turn his attention to the resurrection of Kalgia and the arrival of Momoshiki. Shibai couldn't use omnipotence to rewrite the text that Black Zetsu altered in the Uchiha stone tablet. So Tusai, why didn't Shibai use omnipotence to stop Madara Uchiha? Shibai used his powers to see in the future and realized Madara was a necessary evil to strengthen both Naruto and Sasuke to seal Kalgia once he is resurrected. So instead of using omnipotence to change Madara's mind, Shibai used omnipotence to influence the Great Toad that gave Jiraiya the prophecy that he will find the child that would bring peace to the shinobi world. This led Jiraiya to find Nagato, who already had the renegons that belonged to Madara. From there, he trained and failed Nagato. Nagato basically turned to the dark side once his best friend died, but this placed Jiraiya on the path to create his book and also find Naruto. Naruto meets Nagato, and Nagato propels Naruto to become the beacon of peace of the shinobi world, giving him the tools necessary to save Sasuke Uchiha. From there, that leads everything into Shippuden, Kyogre being sealed, 
and Naruto and Sasuke becoming the strongest ninjas in the shinobi world, Shibai had another problem. Momoshiki and Kenshiki were headed to planet Earth, and he foresaw that Momoshiki would be defeated and plant karma on Borzo. Since omnipotence doesn't work on other Otsutsuki clan members, he had to come up with a different plan, and he used Teneri to plant and awaken the Jogon within the young Boruto Uzumaki. 55 of Boruto Next Generations. On page 26, we're shown a panel of Shibai Otsutsuki in his ascension form, and he's surrounded by Jogons. So it was nothing for him to give Tonari a Jogon to place in Boruto. Tonari thought he was doing this on his own accord, but no, it was Shibai using omnipotence to control him. But wait, two side, isn't Tonari? and Otsusuki, shouldn't he be unaffected by omnipotence? And the answer is no. Teneri isn't a full-blooded Otsusuki. Teneri is no different than Naruto being a reincarnation of Ashura and Sasuke being a reincarnation of Idra. In the last novelization, we learned that as a child, Teneri used to come down to earth and watch Hanata. And he observed Hanata slowly falling in love with Naruto. And we all know this took place when they were children. So there's no way impossible that Teneri was a full-blooded Otsutsuki. Homura was half human, half Otsutsuki. Then he took another human with him up to earth and created his clan on the moon. In the Naruto the last movie, we see Tonari holding his father's hand and in this image we see that the Otsutsuki clan members on the moon had different skin tones. Some resembled the Otsutsuki and the rest looked like humans. 9 out of 10, Teneri's appearance is only because he has the recessive gene traits of his clan. So no, Teneri isn't a full-blooded Otsutsuki and yes, he can be affected by omnipotence. Jibai knows the Jogon is what's going to be necessary for Borzo to use to defeat Momoshiki within his body and Boruto will go on to defeat the rest of the Otsutsuki clan members. But to ensure that Boruto didn't fall into the hands of Momoshiki, Shibai ensured that Sumire and Sarada weren't affected by omnipotence and they weren't affected by Ida's charm ability. That's why there isn't a solid explanation to why Sarada and Sumire aren't affected by Ida's ability. Shibai knew that Sarada would change the fate of Boruto, which she did by awakening her MS and pleading to her father to protect Boruto. This gave Boruto the strength to continue the fight against his fate and his destiny. And the Boruto to Blue Vortex, Boruto will meet Shibai and Shibai will explain how he's been moving all the pieces in the shinobi world to get Boruto to this point. Boruto will destroy the rest of the Otsutsuki clan members and carry out the will of Shibai. And at the end of the series, Boruto will return back to Earth. But that's it for this long video. Thank you for bearing with me. Like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you think down in the comments, and I'm out. Thank you.